We are now joined by Sean Callahan of Husker Online. Sean, good morning. How's it going? Hey, I'm doing great, guys. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Sean. You were at the basketball game last night. Nebraska falls 76 to 50 to Illinois. You were on hand, part of a big crowd. How would you characterize your reaction to that big of a loss? Did you did you see that coming at all? Not really. I will say the the, the real highlight sip of the the day was the upgraded um, uh, help in the arena. They they did a good job being ready for the the crowd. They did. Um, as it was it was way better than what we had seen before. Is that right? Uh, immensely better. Um, all the stands were open, wristband stations, separate beer t- tanks. Yeah, a lot of things going. Unfortunately, the Nebraska basketball team didn't come out ready. To go. Um, and, and yeah, it just it was a bad matchup. I mean, they, they just didn't. Right. It just never felt like Nebraska was in there. Um, Derek Walker getting those two quick early fouls yeah. and having to play the two foul game in the second half where he really had to sit the entire half. Um, it, it did it, none, none of it went right for Nebraska, unfortunately, and then they weren't hitting shots. And Illinois is a good team. I mean, they, they've got good players um, and great length, and it was giving Nebraska a lot of problems. Sean, your favorite food in the world was popcorn. And that – so did you get popcorn? Was it tough to – it wasn't hard to get to your popcorn? No, it wasn't, actually. And, and the Colby Ridge people, they, yeah. they run their own stand. Okay. And they, they've done a good job. I mean, they – this season has been great. great. Uh, a couple of years ago, they had one fresh popcorn stand operating for the entire lower bowl. That was that was when there was a problem. Uh, <laughs> one popcorn machine for 8,000 fans isn't going to cut it. Uh, but uh, they, they've done a really good job all year um, doing, and with, with their stand um, in general. And the, the Val- there's a full-service Valentino stand. Okay. That hasn't been opened in the arena since 2019. Yeah. The last three seasons it's been shut down that was open last night that kind of gives you an idea of the steps they've taken to kind of um listen to trev alberts in the university because there there were stands that had not been open since pre-pandemic last night in in the arena for husker basketball it's kind of a fascinating thing we can delve into that later we have to get to your area of expertise which is nebraska football nebraska football recruiting nebraska football recruiting out of the transfer portal sean sean what was your reaction to Micah Mazuka? Micah Mazuka, the Baylor left guard, choosing Nebraska. Excuse me, choosing Florida over Nebraska. Did that take you by surprise? It did uh, because I felt like he stayed at he stayed at Nebraska an extra day mm-hmm. um, and got to Florida later. I know that that worried Florida um, when he went out there, and you had the Baylor connection, the Philadelphia slash Baltimore connection there with rule and staff. And, you know, Vince Ginto was at Baylor and he was there. So there, there were a lot of things there that looked good for Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I've learned, some of these transfer portal guys, um, the information's kept fairly airtight. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in, in recruiting you, with high school kids, you kind of get a better read on what's going on. Uh-huh. I don't know if anybody had a great read on Mizuka. I just think everybody kind of connects with the dots. Um, the uh-huh. one thing I did find interesting that in Florida, the media wait at the airport to interview recruits before they leave Gainesville and they didn't make him available. Like he, they just kind of blew him by the media group. So I think when he was leaving Gainesville, they probably knew they had him locked up and um, he was announcing Tuesday and they were just letting him get on the plane and get out of there. But um, yeah, I was, I was a little surprised just because it felt, you know, like they were going to get him, um, especially when on Friday night when Omar Hales uh, made the commit sign and you know I, I think that commit sign actually, actually might have been from Malik Horn um, you know who ended up going to Texas State so the transfer portal as you know is, is a is a hard thing to kind of follow and keep track of we've tried to do our best at Husker Online and um, you still got one more name out there Sip and Walter Rouse to follow the possibly by today we move on to Walter Rouse who started 39 games at tackle offensive tackle for stanford rouse is down to iowa oklahoma and nebraska we thought maybe he would announce yesterday there was a possibility but today at some point rouse uh, is expected to make a decision no feel on that one um no i mean nobody really has a great feel um i've talked to some guys at iowa um you know i don't know where oklahoma sits in the picture 
Um, but yeah, that, that's another one that's kind of like last night. And I, you know, it's dangerous to make a prediction because everyone thinks, you know, for sure. Um, you know, like with Mizuka, I said, I, I, I'd give Nebraska an edge if I was looking at it, but obviously it was a slight edge. I mean, I think I, I put my confidence ticket at like 55 or 60 percent on on three, which is a very low confidence when you're making a commit prediction. Um, and I don't have a great feel because I have not talked to Rouse other than through text. Um, I do know, though, his visit went really well to Nebraska. Um, and, you know, they've got opportunity. I mean, I honestly think if I were to pick Rouse and Mazuka, I mean, I think his value to me would be more yeah. uh, because Nebraska really would like to have a tackle that could, that could add something, which they've been trying to add one for the last couple of years. We're, we're talking to Sean Callahan of Husker Online. And, Sean, Nebraska and Marcus Satterfield said this last week that he wants to boost the wide receiver room. He wants to have guys that look different, and he feels like that's one position group that they can improve on. Um, they added Billy Kemp a couple days ago. I mean, what, what does Billy Kemp bring to Nebraska's offense? Oh, he's a really good player. I mean, you look at just what he did in 2020 and 2021. I mean, last year he battled an injury, um, so he didn't have quite the numbers, you know, maybe that – that he had the previous years um, because of the in, the ankle injury, I believe that he battled. Um, but you go back in his previous 21 and 20, 20 seasons, he had 99 targets and 74 catches mm. in 2021. I mean, that's a really good number. Um, six touchdowns in that 2021 season. Um, so 75% of the passes thrown his way were caught um, when he had almost a hundred balls thrown to him. So, um, he's a really good route runner, really fast, really shifty, really quick. Um, you know, he, he's fielded 130 punts for Virginia over his time there. Um, and, and he returns them. I mean, he's not going to sit back there and fair catch him. He's going to be aggressive as a punt returner. So, um, I think Nebraska has got kind of their, their interior slot guy. They can move around and do things with okay. I mean, They probably have their punt returner now as well. Okay. Sean Callahan joins us. Husker online. You've watched video. You've watched film. Of Billy Kemp. He's 5'9, 172. The last two years, Sean, Nebraska's leading receivers have come out of the portal. Samari Ture in 2021, Trey Palmer this season, 2022. Is this the type of player that can lead Nebraska in receiving again? Another portal player that leads Nebraska in receiving. Is Kemp that kind of guy? Could he put up those kind of numbers? Well, who, who, my question is who else would it be? I mean, you know, Joshua Fleeks. The most targets he's ever had in his career is 37 in five years. Okay. Marcus Washington's highest targets is 48. Okay. Um, you know, Alante Brown's highest target number is 25. Uh, Billy Kemp, as I mentioned earlier, has had 99 targets. So on paper, uh -huh. you know, if they were put in like odds in Vegas, yeah, he, he's going to lead Nebraska in receiving right now. Wow. I mean, when you look at the guys they return, if he's healthy, um, to kind of put it in perspective, Trey Palmer had 110 targets last year. Okay. So Billy Kemp's had 97 yeah. or 99. Those are good numbers. He's right up there. Um, Samore Torre, who had almost 900 yards receiving at Nebraska, only had 75 targets that year. And, he, and you know, a lot of those were the deep balls where he had, um, you know, and you, you look at the yards per catch, Samore Torre actually had a, had a higher yards per catch average um, than Trey Palmer. Much and, higher. Much higher. And that's almost hard to believe. Much higher. Uh, I got that number. Samari Ture was 19.5 yards per catch, and Trey Palmer was 14.7. Now, is does this guy look like a receiver in one? Your your number one. Does he look like that? I mean, I mean, does he? If would you be comfortable with that, Sean? Or are you just saying that it's process of elimination they don't have anybody else so therefore yeah he could be number one or well, what's your definition of a receiver one though I mean, go to he's going to lead the team in catches he's going to lead the team in targets. go to in okay. tight situations yeah i think he's your third and six guy he's going to run the route to get you six yards on third and six okay um and and he he can burn they okay. just think that's how they use him at virginia i mean he can run um but he's going to get you those yards when you need them and run the right route, get open, make the catch. I, I think that's the kind of guy they're getting here at Billy Kemp. And, and that's really important in football to have, you know, those kinds of receivers that could come down with that, that kind of catch. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, Sean, after – okay, we talked about Billy Kemp. We talked about Walter Rouse. Walter Rouse has got to make a decision probably today. 
the offensive lineman from Stanford. Is there is there anybody else that's on your radar, on our radar? Um, it's it's really hard to say at this point. I mean, those are the only guys that we know of that have visited Nebraska. Um, there always could be a transfer portal person that we're not even knowing about. Like Joshua Fleeks, you know, announced Nebraska on signing day, and he wasn't on anyone's radar. Um, so that that's that's one right there that you know you, you can look at and and say wow. So there's always a situation like that, but I think with a lot of these higher profile offensive linemen, for example, like you kind of know what's going on at this point. And a lot of guys do tweet out, you know, something that they're on the visit, whether it's a post visit edit or um, just a pin drop that they're in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, so, you know, a lot of people are, at least will do that um, if they don't do interviews on their trips itself. So um, yeah, that's my read kind of on um, where it's at. And, you know, I, I, you wonder how many more I'm more interested to, will there be any more guys that go in the portal here in this last week or has activity really shut down? Okay. Okay. All right, Sean. Hey, appreciate the time as always. Uh, appreciate you still coming on. Although Jake is not here in Lincoln and uh, the guys will definitely talk to you next Wednesday. All right. Thanks guys. Tell right. Jake, uh, have another Mai Tai out in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sean, we will that tell him good. that. There's Sean Callahan, Husker Online. Appreciate his time.